Hello everyone and welcome back to this system series of Star Trek Online. My name is Winters and you are very welcome. So for this episode we are going to talk about fleets and um, some of you may know fleets by another name. Um, in some other games they're known as guilds and a fleet is basically a group or a collection or a community of players that have banded together to play in-game content and also to work towards common goals uh, in order to get high-end endgame fleet gear. Uh, so right, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to open up the fleet window and you can do that by uh, clicking on this button here. You can see now I mouse over it says your fleet in the bottom right hand corner of the minimap and it opens up the fleet window and uh, this is our starbase and um, there are a number of holdings um, available within a fleet. So if we click on the holdings tab here, uh, we can see down along the left hand side here we have a number of different holdings. That, that's what they're called in Star Trek Online. So you have the Starbase holding, you have the Spire holding, you have the Research Lab, K13, Embassy, Dilithium Mine and Colony World. They are the current holdings that are in Star Trek Online at the moment. There will be more in the future, uh, but these are the ones that are currently in the game. So when a fleet starts off, um, these are what you would call facilities. Okay, uh, This is military f facility, this is the engineering facility, and this is the science facility. And when a fleet starts off, uh, all of these are at zero and there's no progression in them at all. So instead of the military facility being colored red like it is now, it would actually be gray. And uh, the numbers here would be set at zero. And uh, that goes the same then for the actual starbase itself. And uh, if we click on uh, tier one here, we can actually see this is the starbase here. Um, and if we click on tier 2 you can see the starbase changes and it gets a bit bigger and a bit more bigger and then even bigger and then finally you get the end product which is this here once it reaches tier 5. Uh, so you might ask right how does a fleet uh, gain experience in order to you know progress up through these different tiers? Well these here uh, on the left hand side these are projects and uh, this one is a military project because it's colored red. This is a science project because it's bluey green. And this is an engineering project because it's uh, yellow or gold. And if we click on it, uh, we can see here then it has a full list of all the resources that are needed in order to complete that project. Um, and you can see a number of them are already filled and uh, dilithium is currently needed to finish this one off. Now, once this project gets finished, you know, 100% filled, we can see it's 52% complete already, uh, it will go on cooldown. And um, depending on the level of your fleet, uh, it could be anywhere between a 20 hour cooldown to a 15 hour cooldown. Just depends on the, the uh, progression that your fleet is uh, at. And once it finishes that cooldown, uh, these rewards here kick into effect. So the first one here is we can see Starbase Military Experience Points. And when the project completes, basically what happens is it rewards that 500 XP into this uh, box here or this facility. Okay, so imagine all of this is grayed out and it's at tier zero. Uh, and we'll imagine that this project here went on cooldown and it completed its cooldown and the second it finishes its cooldown this little bar here would progress up a little bit and you know that little bit would be colored in red uh, indicating that there's 500 XP gone into it and the more projects you complete the more the bar fills up and eventually you get to tier 1 when you get to tier 1 all projects for that facility cease uh, as in you cannot queue up any additional projects and an upgrade becomes available in this slot here okay 
and uh, once you complete the upgrade and it comes off its cooldown you can then proceed and continue on doing more military projects but during that time you can still run engineering and science projects so that's how uh, f a holding levels up um, as the different facilities level up then you can actually do the upgrades on the holding itself so these are the facilities all right military engineering and science facilities but this is the actual holding itself all right the starbase holding and uh, just to go over that again as the facilities level up in tier level you will be able to do more and more upgrades on the holding itself okay um, right uh, different holdings have uh, different pieces of gear um, so what gear do they have? Um, depending on the holding they have different types of gear and uh, these pieces of gear are unlocked by leveling up the different facilities for that particular holding. So for example if I click on tier 1 engineering here and we look at uh, do, 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 this one here uh, it unlocks advanced fleet ground weapons and advanced fleet ground armor. That's what tier 1 engineering unlocks. So once uh, engineering gets to tier 1, completes its upgrade, it can then start, or members can then start purchasing advanced fleet ground weapons and armor. When you get engineering to tier 2, you can then purchase advanced fleet space weapons and advanced fleet engines, as in impulse engines. Uh, let's pick uh, science, tier 3. Once you get science to tier 3, you get elite fleet personal shields. That's what you get for unlocking tier 3. Tier 4 then is elite fleet deflector dishes and elite fleet space shields and uh, each tier uh, has a different set of things that are unlocked once you reach that level uh, for example all right military is actually a list of starships so the military track unlocks all starships so what we can see here these are uh, starfleet starships and then we have some kdf starships and uh, down here at the very bottom then we have a romulan starship and if you go up through the different levels you can see there's an ever-increasing list of starships that are unlocked once you hit those different tier levels and this works the very same way for all holdings uh, with, within your fleet so for example uh, tier 1 research on the spire holding unlocks equipment rare obelisk swarmer hangar pets also ultra rare advanced plasma integrated warp cores and ultra-rare advanced Thoron infused singularity cores. So that's what tier 1 unlocks uh, for the uh, research facility on the Spire. And uh, you can go through all the different ones here like uh, rare Voth science duty officers, equipment personal ground kit variants mark 11, and uh, plus one ground active roster slot and so on and each one of them is all the same uh, well not the same but they work in the same fashion uh, we can see here that um, tier three on research for the research lab itself unlocks uh, purple or very rare crime researcher duty officer requisitions plus one active repu reputation trait slot and plus one R&D project slot that, that's what is unlocked there you can purchase those things from the research lab now, in order to make any purchases from your fleet, uh, you have to have two currencies. One of them is fleet credits, and the other one is dilithium. Now, I'm, I'm going to assume that you are well aware what dilithium is. Uh, for anyone that's not sure, uh, you can open up your inventory by hitting I for India on your keyboard, or you can click on, and sorry, not or, and you can click on the assets tab and uh, if you look down here you will see an, um, how much dilithium you have um, ore is not usable it has to be refined into refined dilithium and uh, that is what you can use so you need refined dilithium in order to make purchases from your fleets uh, holdings the other currency that I mentioned 
was fleet credits. So the question becomes, how do you earn fleet credits? Well, if we click on uh, any of the projects here, um, yeah, we'll go with this one. Uh, so we can see everything is actually filled except uh, for this one here. There's a, a few uh, common duty officers that are needed. And um, basically, you get fleet credits back by contributing resources to your fleet's projects. Okay? So if I click on the contribute button here and uh, I start clicking on the duty officers that I want to contribute, and that's it, I just need four. Uh, we can see here, I'm going to get a thousand fleet credits for contributing those four duty officers. So I'm getting 250 fleet credits per duty officer. And I hit OK. And there, I've got my thousand fleet credits. It's added to my current total. I click OK. And that project is now filled and it is on cooldown. It will complete in 16 hours. And once that project completes, this one here will slot over and uh, take the place of this one that has now been filled, okay? Um, and that's how it, simple it is really to earn fleet credits. Um, I can do the same thing here again, look, just uh, hit select all and I get uh, 4,200 fleet credits for all of that. Uh, let's see if I got any other ones. I'm looking for civilians specifically for uh, putting in here. Uh, here we go, here's some civilians. Just what I was looking for. And if I check, yep. Uh, colonists, uh, yeah, colonists. That's what I want. Uh, oh, right, okay, it was filled. Okay. And there's another project on cooldown. And I got uh, 1,250 fleet credits for uh, donating those few duty officers there. And there's another project on cooldown. So. Yeah, that's how you earn fleet credits, by simply donating resources. Um, let's see, uh, I'm going to donate some other stuff here. Um, how many did I get this time? I got 6,600. Um, finish these off. Got another 1,000 or 1,200. Let's have a look at some of these. Here we go. All right. Okay. And um, let's throw in some dilithium. We'll throw in a little bit of dilithium. Um, actually, wait. No. All right. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is the types of resources that you can contribute. Uh, now, I'm kind of stuck here because uh, a lot of these are already taken up. So one of the biggest things... Um, one of the big, biggest downfalls to players is uh, they're stuck in this mindset that fleet marks is the only way to earn fleet credits. Bull. Absolute rubbish. It is not. In fact, it's not even the best way to earn fleet credits. For each fleet mark, you only get 50 fleet credits back. Okay? Now, if you remember just a few minutes ago when we were contributing those duty officers, uh, it was the common or civilian one, um, civilian ones that we were uh, contributing. We were getting 250 fleet credits for each one. Okay. Now compare that to the fleet marks. You only get 50 credits for each one. Um, for any career specific ones, so let's say, crap, I've used them all now, haven't I? Um, I have right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly go to the exchange. I am going to look for an ast astrometric scientist, and we'll just buy this guy here. Okay. Um, open up the duty roster again. Okay. Uh, so you can see this project uh, is a little different from this one. It says common science or medical. So they're they're focusing specifically on certain careers. So this is. Uh, a more general and this is a little bit more specific so any of the projects that require general duty officers you will only get 250 fleet credits for each duty officer um, and that's not bad there's nothing wrong with that you can see like it's uh, five times better than um, fleet marks uh, but if it's career specific uh, in this case science or medical you will actually get 300 
fleet credits for each duty officer that you put into the fleet. Okay? So that's just a little bit of a distinction there. Um, typically, you get 300 fleet credits for each. If it's a more general um, type of uh, duty officer, meaning it can be civilian, it can be career specific, it doesn't matter, it'll take anything, uh, then you will only get 250. Uh, if it's career specific, um, like this one, you can see, look, it needs engineering, you get 300 for those. Uh, tactical and security, you get 300 for those, and so on. Um, 300 for these ones, 250 for these ones. So, um, yeah, uh, duty officers are actually the best way to earn fleet credits, and if you can get into farming duty officers regularly, uh, anyone that's watched any of my previous series will be aware of recruiting duty officers for free, 100% for free, from the academy. Uh, once, let's say, every three days. Um, and um, also, all the duty officers that are required for fleet projects are only whites or commons. And to be perfectly honest, you don't really want your commons. You want purples or very rares, uh, blues or rares, Greens, which are on commons, are eh, not really. You'd want a better quality, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but still, that doesn't make any difference. Uh, the whites, definitely, you, you you don't want them. Throw them into the into your fleet. Get some fleet credits for them. Okay. Now, dilithium. Dilithium, you get a one is to one ratio. So let's um, now we'll try one here that's completely empty. All right, here. This one's completely empty. Uh, we can see it needs 20,375 dilithium. I click on contribute. I move the bar all the way over to the left and look, 20,375 dilithium and I get 20,375 fleet credits. There is a one is to one ratio. Um, that might seem pretty crap and do you know what, to be perfectly honest, it's, it's not the best, but it's not that hard to earn dilithium. Uh, again, if you've anyone that's been watching any of my series will know that it is not hard to get dilithium. And the trick to earning crap tons of dilithium is multiple characters, because the more characters you have, the more dilithium you can refine per day, and you can uh, eventually consolidate it then all onto one character. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK on that, and we put another project on cooldown, and I get another bunch of fleet credits back. Right, so that's earning fleet credits. Um, now, we still um, need one other item before we can purchase any gear from the fleet. And that is provisions. And uh, if we just go back down to where we started here. Um, do you remember we talked about the 500 experience? Okay, so when the project completes, it'll add 500 experience to whatever the total is here, unless it's already maxed out. 250 is 250,000 is the maximum that um, the star base can reach. Okay, um, but we never talked about these here, which are uh, the other reward that we get for completing the project, which in this case is 18 star base military fleet ship provisions. Okay, now if I click on the provisions tab here, we see a full list of all the provisions that the fleet has. So when this project comes off its cooldown, these 18 provisions will be added to the stockpile that are here. And we can see there's 1,655 military fleet ship provisions available. So when that project goes on cooldown and comes off its cooldown, eventually it will be added onto this pile here. Uh, so these provisions uh, do not necessarily belong to you. They belong to the fleet. And when you go to fleet vendors, you might see in the window that comes up, you know, like when you're going buying the gear, it will say you can purchase uh, 1,600 or you can make 1,655 purchases. That is actually the fleet's provisions that you're using. So it's it's not that they're yours, they actually belong to the fleet. Uh, this is not something that is open to interpretation. They actually do belong to the fleet, okay? 
So there is no interpretation about this. I'm, I'm given very, very accurate information here. And that's very, very important to, uh, to realize. Um, and each item that you purchase will use one of those provisions. So let's say if I was going to purchase a fleet ship, most people will end up with a fleet ship uh, because simply they're, they're just better. Uh, they, they've got more hull, they've got more shields, and they've got an extra console slot. Uh, so you most likely, most likely, there's like an 80% chance that you will end up with a fleet ship. The reason why it's 80% and not 100% is because not all ships have a fleet variant. Sometimes some ships that you purchase from the sea store are essentially already fleet. And um, f ships that you get as uh, prizes from lockboxes uh, don't have fleet ver versions, okay? Uh, so yeah, if I was to purchase a fleet ship, it would uh, take away one provision from here and um, uh, I would get my fleet ship. Um, do you remember earlier we talked about uh, here at tier 2 you get advanced fleet space weapons and advanced fleet engines once engineering reaches tier 2. Well if we go back to provisions we can see here we actually have 1600 provisions even for engineering personal requisition provisions. Now these provisions are used to purchase uh, advanced and elite ground weapons, armor, um, advanced and elite space weapons and engines. Um, these ones uh, Science personal requisition provisionings, we have uh, 1978. Those are used for space and ground shields, uh, deflectors, and um, hangar pets. Um, then you have these buff provisions and operational asset provisions, and to be perfectly honest, uh, nobody really uses them. Um, they're just things that you can purchase from the fleet for certain types of buffs, and nobody uses them. To be perfectly honest, I wouldn't be worried about them. The provisions that you do want to take note of is the military fleet ship provisions, the engineering personal requisition provisions, and the science personal requisition provisions. Uh, right, so each time you purchase an item, it requires a certain type of provision. So we said the fleet ship provisions are for fleet ships, the engineering uh, provisions personal requisition provisions are for ground weapons, armor, space weapons, uh, space engines and so on. Uh, science personal requisition provisions are for space, ground shields, uh, deflectors and uh, hangar pets. So each time you purchase an item it's going to take away from one of those three provisions. And if you do purchase uh, like let's say the military buff provision uh, buffs it will take away a provision from that stockpile, okay? Uh, same if you pick the engineering buffs or the operational assets, it'll take away from that stockpile of uh, provisions. And every single holding works the same way. If we look here, Spire Research Personal Requisition Provisions, we have 1,533. So, uh, what does that mean? What can we purchase? Basically, you just look along the research track, all right? Because they're research provisions. So we look at the research track, and if we click on Tier 1, uh, Obelisk Swarm of Pets, Advanced Plasma Integrated Warp Cores, Advanced Thorn of Few Singularity Cores. If I click on Tier 2, uh, Advanced Obelisk Swarmers, Vulnerability Exploiter Mark 12 Tactical Consoles, and if I click on Tier 3, uh, Elite Obelisk Swarmer Hangar Pets, Vulnerability Locator Mark 12 Tactical Consoles, Elite Plasma Integrated Warp Cores and Elite Thoron Infused Singularity Cores. That is all the stuff, alright, between those three tiers that will use research provisions. Operation provisions are for then the operational facility, okay? So whatever the operational facility unlocks, that's what it will purchase. Um, and every single holding works the same way, alright? Each tier unlocks a different set of gear and each tier has its own type of provisions. Um, right, let's see what is next. Um, we've talked about projects, uh, 
cooldown times, we've talked about provisions, we've talked about advancing level. Uh, this is actually probably a good one to talk about. Uh, the Colony World is a fairly recent addition to the game. And as you can see, we're not finished with it yet. We're moving along extremely well, though. Uh, we're already at Tier 4, and we're basically just working on the Tier 4 to Tier 5 grind. And uh, let's uh, let's pick this infrastructure project. Um, again, we can see it needs um, some dilithium and uh, some colony or provisions to put it on cooldown. Everything else is filled. If we look at rewards here, we can see we get 1,000 colony infrastructure experience. There is no provisions with this particular project. Um, if we look at provisions, we've actually got a nice little stockpile, so we don't need to build up anymore. Um, right, so once this project goes on cooldown and comes off its cooldown, it will add 1,000 experience onto this total, moving the bar from here maybe to about there. All right, Not a whole lot. It's at 132,000. It has to go to 250. But it will as time passes by, it will eventually fill up, and before you know it, it will be at 250,000. And then it will unlock an upgrade down here, and the upgrade can be done, and then, voila, infrastructure is at tier 5. Um, so that's a good one to, to look at, so you can see what it actually looks like as a holding is uh, leveling up. That's, that's essentially what one of them looks like. Um, the Colony World and the Starbase, both of those are five-tier holdings. Um, they're currently the only five-tier holdings in the game. Uh, the Spire, Research Lab, K13, Embassy and Dilithium Mine are three-tier holdings, uh, meaning there's only three tiers in them. Now, something else I want to talk about, um, going back to projects. Um, if we look here, um, remember I said earlier that p there are a wide or a large number of players that are stuck in this mindset that fleet marks is the only way to earn fleet credits. And I said that's absolute bull. It's absolute crap. You just seen me earn, God, I don't even know, how, how much did I earn there? 30,000 fleet credits? Probably closer to 50,000 fleet credits within the space of a couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a, a large number of players and they're stuck in this mindset that fleet marks is the only way because, uh, and I won't lie to you, uh, Dilithium is a very valuable currency. It is, it's plain and simple, it's just a, a valuable currency. It's used for a lot of different things. And players find it very hard to part with it for fleet projects. But it's actually not a bad idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because you might uh, part with, uh, let's say, could be 20,000, could be 100,000, and purchase fleet gear as opposed to, let's say, reputation gear. Uh, and you would still end up purchasing the fleet item for a cheaper price at a higher quality compared to the reputation gear. Reputation gear is the most expensive gear in the game to purchase and to upgrade. Um, fleet gear is one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, when you consider the level that it's already at. Meaning that it's ultra rare Mark 12 in most cases. Um, reputation gear is very rare, which is one step below ultra rare and uh, usually Mark 12 as well. Um, so you might uh, throw in X amount of Dilithium into your fleet to get X amount of fleet credits and then buy whatever item it is you wanted for a cheaper price than you would have purchased, let's say, the reputation version of that item. Um, now I know there's players out there that, uh, you know, they, they like uh, collecting sets. Uh, you know, they, they might want a particular set for whatever reason. They might be a completionist and, you know, they just like to collect sets. Um, and, you know, that's totally fine. That is totally fine. Um, but you you have to look at Dilithium investment into fleets as an investment, actually. Really, this is the only way to put it. It is an investment uh, because you are getting something back for it. You're getting fleet credits. And... Um, 
ultimately you need fleet credits uh, in order to purchase high-end fleet gear and the average build uh, the let's say the bare minimum for an average build you are looking at 1 million fleet credits that's how many fleet credits you are going to need to kit out your ship with the basic gear for your end game now when I say that I mean uh, let's say the Spire, for example. Uh, do you remember we talked about the uh, Vulnerability Exploiter and the Vulnerability Locator consoles? Hands down, no room for interpretation whatsoever. Your tactical consoles are going to come from the fleet. Simple as that. Whether they come from the Spire or they come from the Colony world. Uh, if I remember right, it's military... No, it's this one, isn't it? I th yeah. Um... Tier 5 on the Renewable Energy Facility gives Elite Fleet Space Tactical Consoles. Uh, we're not there yet. Uh, the other place to get Tactical Consoles are from the Spire, like I mentioned there a minute ago. But hands down, no room for interpretation whatsoever. Your Tactical Consoles, if you want the best gear, they're coming from the fleet. However, Fleet Tactical Consoles are 50,000 fleet cr credits each. So if I open up my character sheet here and I look at my build for this particular guy, there's 200,000 fleet credits right there, just in those four consoles. 200,000 credits gone, like that. And that's just with four consoles. That's not including if I want any weapons. That's not including if I want any trait unlocks, which you will, I guarantee you, you want your starship trait unlock. If I remember right, that's another 250,000 for that slot there. For that one alone. You want your uh, space, ground, and active slots unlocked. Uh, you will want um, your sixth active slot. You uh, get five of them for free. You can unlock a sixth one down here uh, for your active space and ground. Um, you will go through a million fleet credits unbelievably fast um, yeah and the average build you're looking at a million fleet credits uh, it can go higher depending you know, on how much fleet stuff you want to purchase uh, it, it could be as high as three million fleet credits you know if you're if you're going for very specific uh, duty officers for example or bridge officers um, uh, yeah it, it could go as high as three million uh, but I guarantee you will spend a million fleet credits on f uh, different fleet unlocks and gear. I guarantee it. Um, but anyway, getting back to what I was talking about. Um, one thing that I see an awful lot of is uh, players bitching that the expertise is always the first thing to get filled. They're always bitching about it. Oh, the expertise is filled. Somebody stole the XP from me. And... I explain, at least to my members anyway, um, I explain to them that it is not worth getting upset over. And here's why. Uh, let's, let's take this project here, right? A hundred thousand expertise. For a hundred thousand expertise, you only get four thousand fleet credits back. For a hundred thousand investment, you only get four thousand back. That's it. 4,000. People think when they see 100,000 that they're going to get a 1 is to 1 ratio and they don't. It's anything but. In fact, let's say if you wanted to get 100,000 fleet credits, you would have to donate 2.5 million expertise just to get 100,000 fleet credits. And this is one of the big, biggest projects that there are. Um, in the game for you know like uh, in, in terms of XP uh, required a hundred thousand is it now granted you will get upgrades that will want about two and a half million some of the upgrades do want two and a half million um, but they're upgrades upgrades are a one-time deal they're not reoccurring projects uh, but a hundred thousand XP and you only get four thousand fleet credits you can't buy anything from the fleet with 4,000 fleet credits. And, like I said, a lot of players, they don't realize that the payout is crap. So, keep that in mind as well. Don't think that you're losing out. 
and you can't look at any contrib contribution that you make to your fleet as losing out. You're not. You're putting in or contributing a resource and you're getting fleet credits back because ultimately you need those fleet credits to purchase high-end uh, end-game fleet gear from the fleet later on down the road. Um, right, so that's uh, fleets and how projects work and leveling them up and uh, fleet credits and the return on investment and the ratios and all that sort of stuff. Um, what do I want to talk about next? Uh, oh yeah, uh, each holding has a leaderboard um, for anyone that's interested. And actually, uh, right, so here's something. Um, usually, in most fleets, excuse me, I was taking a drink. In most fleets, um, you do not gain access to the fleet stores, as in you are not able to make any purchases uh, once from the second you join the fleet. Uh, usually, most of them, and we work this same way as well, you have to earn X amount of fleet credits and then you get promoted. And once you get promoted, you then are given access to the fleet stores and you can make whatever purchases you want. You're completely free to make whatever purchases you want. You're only limited by the amount of fleet credits you have, the amount of dilithium you have, and the amount of provisions the fleet has. That's all the only things that are limiting you. Um, so yeah, you have to earn a promotion in most fleets uh, in order to gain access to the fleet stores. Uh, for our uh, group of fleets, uh, because all right, so this is one of my fleets, uh, Priority One Armada. Uh, we have uh, Priority One all the way down to Omega, and um, we'll talk about that a little later on. Uh, so, in order to get the first promotion, you have to earn a hundred thousand fleet credits, and once you get the hundred thousand fleet credits, you are then promoted, and you gain complete, full, and open access to all fleet stores. Now, you might ask, right, how do I keep track of how much you've earned? Uh, some people get confused and they look at their assets tab. And we can see here, alright, my current fleet credit total is 781,845. And I have uh, uh, 1,275 fleet marks. Um, this number only shows what you currently have. This does not show what you have actually earned. And they're two very different things. So let's say you were in one fleet and um, let's say I was in a fleet and I earned 700,000 fleet credits in that fleet but it turned out to be a crap fleet and I left. And then I joined Priority One Armada. Okay and I then earn 81,845 fleet credits in Priority 1 Armada. Because I have 781,000 here does not mean that I have earned 781,000 in Priority 1 Armada. Okay? So it's very important to remember that. Uh, fleet credits earned in other fleets do not count towards your total in your current fleet. Uh, there simply is no way to track it in-game. It's impossible to track. When you move or go into a fleet, there is no way for that fleet to know what you earned in another fleet. Okay, it's impossible. The, the system simply doesn't support that. So to keep track of what you have actually earned in the fleet, you need to go to the roster tab. And uh, this is what a typical roster would look like, alright? It shows uh, current... Uh, members online. Uh, if you have this box checked here, it will show all members, whether they're online or offline. Okay? And you can see here in the column it shows you know, their status, whether they're online or offline. And you can uh, um, organize by name, you can organize by rank, you can organize by career um, and location and blah 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 blah. I always keep it organized by fleet rank. Anyway, if you click here on member comments and change it to overall holding contribution, you will see the grand total that you have earned in that fleet. 
So remember, I have this is what I currently have. I have 781,000 fleet credits earned. Or no, 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 sorry. This is what I currently have. 781,000. That's what I currently own. All right. But I have earned over 5 million in this fleet. So this number only ever goes up. It never goes down. This number goes up and down. As you earn fleet credits, it goes up. As you buy items from the fleet and you spend them, this number goes down. This one, though, only ever goes up. It never goes down. Every time you earn a fleet credit, it is logged and recorded and added on to the current uh, total. Okay? And that is the number that you need to keep an eye on. Uh, because most promotions are based off uh, fleet cr um, credit contributions. Um, right. The next thing I want to talk about is um, whether you're new to the game or not. But let's focus on uh, new players to the game. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, you should try and get into a fleet early on. Um, the reason why you want to get into a fleet early on is, uh, number one, actually, to gauge it. Uh, you need to get into a good fleet, especially if you're a new player. Um, because if you're a new player, you're going to most likely need help with um, maybe running certain missions, uh, doing PvE queues, or help with your build. You know, you might need advice uh, on uh, actually building out your your starship, and you know what should what gear should you go for? What stuff should I get from the reputation store? What stuff should I get from the fleet stores, the various fleet stores? Um, yeah, and your fleet should help you with that. Now, if you're in a fleet that has no communication whatsoever, or you're trying to communicate with them and they're not communicating back, uh, or it's really inactive and dead, um, then, to be perfectly honest, you need to get out of that fleet and you need to move on to a new one. Um, I have no qualms uh, saying this whatsoever. Um, the Priority One Armada and all of its fleets are very, very active. Um, now, I know on the roster here, there's currently only two of us here, um, but that's just in this fleet. Uh, we have um, 13 Federation fleets and 13 Klingon fleets, and we all uh, chat together over a custom chat channel, and um, while there may not be many members online in one fleet, there could be a lot of members online in one of the other fleets. Um, so, with so many fleets in our armada, uh, there is always somebody online. And uh, to be perfectly honest, we have a great bunch of members. Everyone is so friendly and helpful. And um, there's some real aces in the armada that can help you out with uh, builds and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, uh, one, one thing, whenever I'm doing recruiting and I'm talking to uh, potential new members, uh, one thing that I always say to them is, look it, you can give it a shot and if you don't like it, you can move on with no hard feelings and it won't have cost you a thing. You know, you can give it a shot, but I'm so confident that you, if you decide to join us, Priority One Armada, you are going to absolutely love it here. Uh, we do regular competitions, giveaways, uh, events of all sorts uh, throughout the calendar year. Um, we celebrate our anniversary every June. Um, last year we had uh, just over 2.5 billion EC worth of prizes uh, for our anniversary. This year we were celebrating our fifth year anniversary and as you all know uh, the number five is you know the five-year mission it's a pretty big deal in Star Trek um, and for our fifth year anniversary we had over 10 billion EC worth of prizes up for grabs 
Um, we are always doing, as I say, competitions, giveaways, uh, events of all sorts, and um, uh, it's a really, really active community. Um, so, yeah, you need to find a good fleet, and if you're in a fleet that is not talking to you, there's never anybody online, the projects aren't cycling over or anything like that, you need to move on and find yourself a good fleet. If that's the case, think about Priority One Armada. I guarantee you, you will not regret it. I absolutely guarantee it. Um, right. Uh, do, 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 do. Next. Um, we've talked about holdings, we've talked about uh, overall holding contributions. We've talked about uh, a good fleet. Uh, yeah, you want to get into a fleet early on. You want to gauge it. If it's not good, move on. Go to another one. Um, oh, by the way, uh, here's the leave fleet button. It's on the roster tab. That's all you just click that and you can leave the fleet. That's how you leave a fleet for anyone that's interested. Um, armadas. Right. This is the next thing I'm going to talk about. Sorry, taking another drink again. So, just as fleets are a group or collection of players that have banded together, armadas are a group or collection of fleets that have banded together. And as you can see, uh, these are all uh, Priority 1 fleets. These are all my fleets. Um, we have uh, prior Priority 1 Armada all the way down to Priority 1 Omega. So this is the fleet that I'm actually in now at the moment. Uh, if I go to Overview page, we can see, look, Priority 1 Armada. Go to our uh, Roster page, Priority 1 Armada. This is the fleet that I'm in now. And this is known as the Alpha Fleet. Because it is at the top of the food chain. And then under that, there are three Beta Fleets. All right, You can see the, the graph there. All right, These ones are directly under the Alpha. And these are called Beta Fleets because they're in the beta position. And the three fleets are Priority 1 Beta, Priority 1 Gamma, Priority 1 Delta. And each one of those fleets have three fleets under it. And these are called Gamma Fleets. So we have Priority 1 Epsilon, Priority 1 Ferengi Alliance, Priority 1 Zeta. These are the Gamma Fleets under Beta. Altogether, there's 13 fleets in an Armada. That's the maximum amount that you can currently have within an Armada. Um... Now, I'm going to go back here to the overview page real quick uh, for one, one second now. This number here is the fleet level. Um, basically, the more upgrades that are done within the different facilities and holdings, it adds to the fleet level. Okay, So, let's say now, uh, on the colony world, once morale gets to tier 5 it will add one point onto this bringing the fleet level up to 82 when sorry I'm trying to there we go when infrastructure gets to tier 5 it will add another point bringing up to tier th uh, 83 when renewable energy gets up there it will add another point bringing it up to 84 and then we will be able to do the tier 5 upgrade on the colony world itself bringing it up to a ma current maximum level of 85 now back to the armada page we can see here it has armada level the armada level is a grand total of all fleet levels combined okay so currently we're at uh, 518. Uh, we can see here, um, Priority 1 Armada, current fleet level 81. Priority 1 Beta, cur current fleet level 80. Uh, 80. Uh, Priority 1 Epsilon, 75. Priority 1 Gamma, uh, 75. Delta, 72. Um, uh, Sigma, 27. Uh, and so on. So all the fleets are added up, and it makes a combined total of 518. Um, depending on the armada level, um, you then get certain bonuses. So for every 35 points, um, these numbers go up. So 
the Alpha Fleet, all right, benefits from these bonuses here, which are currently 14% of an experience point bonus, all right? So uh, that's the Alpha Fleet that benefits from that. The Alpha Fleet also gets a 3.5 Dilithium discount to all fleet projects and upgrades. Now, the three Beta Fleets get a 7% experience, experience point bonus and a 7% Dilithium discount. And then the Gamma Fleets, every single one of the Gamma Fleets get a 3.5% uh, XP bonus and a 14% Dilithium discount. Okay? So as this level goes up, every 35 levels, these numbers go up to a maximum total of uh, 20 here, 5 here, 10 here, 10 here, uh, 5 here, and 20 here. Um, and that number for the Armada level is level 700. At level 700, these stop increasing, and you've reached the maximum bonuses that can be got. Um, for most players, uh, this stuff d won't uh, matter to you. Uh, for fleet leaders and indeed Armada leaders, um, that information will be more important to them. Uh, now, when you are in a fleet that is part of an armada, uh, we've already talked about and shown how you can contribute resources uh, to different uh, projects and earn fleet credits back. Well, within the armada system, let's pick uh, Gamma, okay? Uh, we can click on Gamma Fleet and we can click on the Holdings tab and look it shows us the available holdings for the colony world for the dilithium mine for the embassy for the k13 research lab uh, spire and the starbase and if we wanted we could if there's any of them available no all right this one's got some available all right here um, common duty officers we can contribute resources to priority one gamma fleet and we get fleet credits back. Alright? If I want to throw in some fleet marks. Alright, we'll just throw in a small number of fleet marks. And look, we get fleet credits back. Uh, now, the thing to be aware of is any fleet credits earned through the Armada system, okay, i.e. other fleets in your Armada, y that does not count to this number here. The system does not record fleet credits earned in other fleets. That's probably the best way to put it. The system does not record any fleet credits earned in other fleets, and that's what you're doing. You're accessing other fleets in your armada, and you're earning fleet credits in those fleets, even though you haven't moved and you're not actually in the fleet. You're still in your home fleet, uh, but you're earning credits through the armada system in a different fleet. And it's very important to realize it does not count here. The system simply doesn't record it. Look at that number. 5093597. Alright, I'll earn a couple of more fleet credits here. We'll just pick a small amount. And we go back. 5093597. Hasn't changed. Hasn't changed one bit. Alright, very important to keep that in mind. Um, you can also access the rosters and you can see uh, members that are online or offline uh, within each of those fleets. So this is a current list of uh, people that are online now in Priority 1 Epsilon. And if we want, we can show all uh, players, whether they're online or offline. And we can go through uh, the different pages and view everyone that's uh, in them there as well if we want. Let me go back and uh, this is just showing online players now. Right. Um, t -t 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 -t. Let's see, what's next? Um, right, I'll give you guys an overview of what you can purchase uh, from... Actually, do you know what? I'll show you guys. So, we are going to beam up to our starship. And what we're actually going to do 
is we're going to travel to the fleet starbase and I'm going to quickly show you the different vendors. Um, I, I'm not going to spend too long because this video has turned out to be a very long video. Um, but I'll go to each of the holdings and show you where the vendors are and types of stuff that you can get. Um, so if you click on this button here, uh, it'll open up the transwarp window. And um, we can see here in the list it says fleet starbase system. As long as your fleet is a high enough level, you will be able to transwarp to your fleet starbase for 100% free. Click transwarp and it's going to bring us there. It's not going to cost us a penny. Now, this is the Priority One Armada Starbase. Uh, we can see over there, that's a communication array. That's a shipyard over there. Uh, this is an industrial fabricator, and then a transwarp conduit. And this is the actual Starbase itself. Now, for anyone that's interested, if we look at the galaxy map, this is where the Federation Starbase is located. It is the same for every single fleet in game. Basically, it's just a different instance for each fleet, okay? So, there's Earth, okay? And there's the fleet starbase. Uh, right, we are going to dock with uh, the fleet starbase and uh, we'll show you guys around. Right, um, I'm not going to spend too long here. Uh, if I tell you what, if you guys would like to see what um, uh, all the holdings really look like and the different, th like this stuff here, like holiday decorations, just uh, look up here. Ta da! You get a hologram. Uh, if you guys are interested in, you know, taking a look at completed um, star bases and other holdings, uh, let me know in the comments and I will uh, do a video about that. But. Uh, Anyway, this is this is uh, these are the vendors, all right. So talk to Fleet Ground Supplies Officer, and we go to store, and you can see here a full list on the left hand side of all the different types of fleet ground gear. We have uh, advanced assault rifles, pistols, um, rifles, armor, shields, elite assault weapons, uh, elite pistols, rifles, armor, shields, advanced melee, elite melee, and so on. Oh, 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 um, right, I want to show you this. Um, see here, 1,600 items remaining. If we go and open fleet and we go to starbase and provisions, 1,600 provisions, okay? Uh, if we go to shields, 1,978. And we go back here again, 1,978. So remember, uh, these are not yours, these are the fleets, and this works the same in every single fleet. So you're only limited by your current amount of fleet credits, your current amount of dilithium, and the current amount of provisions your fleet has. All right? And each time you make a purchase, it will take away one of those provisions from the fleet. So that's ground stuff. Do you remember the buffs and the operational assets crap that I was talking to you about earlier? Remember I said it wasn't really worth, you know, nobody uses it. This is the guide to talk to. Uh, if you're interested in any of that stuff, uh, this is where you can get it. You have uh, operational assets, engineering, operational assets, military, operational assets, science, boosts, engineering, tech and science, boosts, ground, uh, fleet marks. You, you can get a fleet mark bonus pool for fleet credits. Not worth it in my opinion. Uh, but look at if you're interested, that's where it is. Uh, over here, this is the space supplies officer. And this is where you purchase space gear on the fleet starbase. You have advanced weapons and there's again a full selection. Look, these are anti-protons. Beam arrays, dual beam banks, cannons, heavy cannons, dual heavy cannons, disruptor and all the way down phaser. Uh, photon torpedoes, plasma, uh, plasma torpedoes, Polaron, um, what's next, quantum, tetrion, and transphasic and tricobalt. 
Uh, engines, all the different various types of engines, shields, deflectors, elite fleet weapons, engines, shields, deflectors, and hangar pets. Alright, this is all space stuff here. <clears throat> and finally, this dude here is the tailor. Um, there is a, a costume that you can purchase. Uh, I have already purchased them, but there are every fleet holding has a unique costume that can be purchased from it, assuming that your fleet holding is at the appropriate level. Right, we are going to come back out of there and we are going to um, move on to the next holding. So we're going to go back into the transport room. And this time we are going to go to the colony world. And the starbase acts like as um, a hub for all fleet holdings. There's, you know, you can get to every other fleet holding from the fleet starbase. So the starbase is the main hub. Okay. This will just take a minute to load up, uh, depending on how busy a particular holding is. Uh, there may be loads of instances opened um, and, you know, free ones are generated. And in the case of this one, the colony isn't that busy, so there isn't that many. Um, right. We'll move forward a little bit and we'll be able to beam down to the planet. Right. Beam to colony. Okay, so this is the colony world. Um, there's there's a few different things you can do here. Um, uh, just you have bank and mail access here. Uh, I, I should have shown you that stuff at the starbase, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, basically, when you come out of the transporter room and go straight ahead, uh, there is a bank and mail access there. Right, uh, so here you have ground and space equipment requisitions. Uh, we click on the ground one, and here's all the ground stuff. Armor, shields, pistols, rifles, assault weapons, kit frames, kit modules. And again, notice uh, the uh, items remaining. Uh, 273, 208. See? Uh, so they're the provisions. If we go to space equipment, uh, these are grayed out now because we haven't got these unlocked yet. But no, take note of the price: fifty thousand fleet credits for the tactical consoles. Remember, I said guaranteed one hundred percent certainty with no room for interpretation. You are going to want your tactical consoles from the fleet, whether that's from the colony. Or from the Spire. I guarantee they're coming from the fleet because it's the only place you can get them. And they are the best in game. Um, right, anyway. Warp cores. Singularity cores. Deflectors. Secondary deflectors. Shields. Engines. Projectile weapons. Energy weapons. All available here. Uh, they're the two main vendors. Uh, this then is uh, the tailor. And once again... Oh, we don't actually have it unlocked yet. Oh, crap. All right. We don't have that unlocked. Uh, we're nearly there. That's just an upgrade that has to be done. Um, if you have any injuries on your character, you can come here and you can get them treated. Uh, they would appear here, and you click Heal All, and it will heal them all for free. If you have any damage on your starship from playing advanced or elite content, same deal. You simply select the starship, and a list of damage will appear here, and you can repair it all here for free. Um, right, uh, that's the vendors. I'll let you guys explore the colony world yourselves. I won't do that. Again, if you guys want me to do like a review on fleet holdings or something, let me know in the comments, and I'll do that. Uh, let me know if that's you know something that you'd be interested in. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try and get it done for you guys. Uh, right. Is this... 
Need something? All right, I fleet starbase. Transport, yes, transport fleet starbase. So I'm going back to the fleet starbase now, and I'm going to go to a different holding. Okay, so we are going to dock with the station once more, and then we're going to take uh, the shuttle to the embassy. So we just talk to the transport operator, we transwarp to other fleet holdings, and we will pick the fleet embassy, and it just simply brings us there. The fleet embassy is located in the Beta Quadrant on New Romulus. For anyone that's interested, uh, you can actually fly directly there. Okay, so we are in the shuttle bay. Um, one of the vendors is, uh, well actually two of the vendors, three of the vendors are actually here. Uh, requisition space equipment. Uh, basically science consoles is what's here. Um, yeah, uh, th there's a wide variety of science consoles that do all sorts of different things. Uh, some of them are hull repair, some of them are shield repair. Uh, some of them add a plasma dot onto your weapons. Uh, a dot is uh, damage over time, even if the weapon is not plasma based itself. So it could be anti proton, and it will add a plasma dot. Uh, this vendor here, um, the main thing that you would want would be these active duty officer assignment slots. Um, so anyone that is uh, familiar with the duty officer system, you know that you can do a maximum of 20 assignments, duty officer assignments, at any one time. You can expand that to 23 by purchasing additional slots here. Uh, this console over here then is for ground equipment. Uh, so you're talking kits and kit modules, basically. And you have all three careers, uh, tech engineer and science. Right, uh, we're going to go up this ramp, we're going to go to the turbo lift, and we are going to go to Ops. Right, uh, we'll go left, and the first console here has a tailor. And again, there's a store, and there is a costume that you can purchase uh, from the tailor here. Uh, the next console has operational assets. Um, basically, they're like distress calls. You can call. You can call in uh, fleet support. You know, when you're in certain types of missions or PVE queues. Um, I don't use them. I, I don't know anybody else that does use them. To be honest with you, uh, requisition duty officers store. You can purchase duty officers here uh, for fleet credits. Um, they're pricey. One hundred and twenty-five thousand for the very rares. They're definitely pricey, um, but you know they're they're pretty good. Um, you can also access uh, your recruitment uh, things that you know that are on Starfleet Academy. You can also access them here as well, um, which is um, well, it's a handy thing to keep in mind, I suppose. Um, yeah, right, and there should be one more console. Yeah, here, this one. This is the big one. Requisition Bridge Officers. Now, uh, right, so the list has uh, available uncommon or green uh, engineer, tech, and science. It has a list of uh, rare engineering, tech, and science. And it has a list of very rare engineering, tech, science. However, there's a bug with this system. Uh, these bridge officers here, no matter what ship you're flying, you want all of your tactical stations, so if your ship has one tactical station, or it has two, or it has three, you want all of your tactical stations to have this bridge officer, and only this one. 
the Romulan male tactical officer rare quality or blue quality this is the one because if you look at the um, space abilities see superior Romulan operative plus crit and crit severity reduce cloak cooldown the plus crit and crit severity is what you're looking for and these stack so the more of them you have on your uh, ship the more uh, crit chance and crit severity you have and this guy turns to a purple once you purchase him guaranteed you want this guy and this guy only okay the female no good because um, it's only Romulan operative this is superior Romulan operative he's the only one that has it okay so very important to remember that uh, again take note of the provisions 2736 that doesn't mean that you have 2736 it's the fleet has that many but that's how many purchases can be made from the fleet right um, I'm trying to remember uh, the only other place available is the lobby which basically has bank mail and exchange access but again if you guys want uh, that sort of stuff in a video let me know and I will uh, record it um, right we're back in the shuttle bay we're going to move on to the next holding and we are going to go to the spire So here we are at the Fleet Spire. Now, first thing is you have the tailor here. And again, there's another costume that you can purchase for using fleet credits in Delithium. You have requisition personnel. Again, you can purchase duty officers with fleet credits. Uh, just like last time, the very rares, they're pricey, but they're pretty freaking good. Uh, if you want to expand your active space and ground slots. Remember I said you could purchase a sixth slot for each of them. Uh, this is where you do it. Plus one active ground duty officer slot, plus one active space duty officer slot. Again they're pricey. 150,000 fleet credits for each one of them. So remember I said you were going to need a million fleet credits minimum. This is where a lot of it goes because this active space can, and, and the active ground, can make quite a big difference, believe it or not. And it's a very good investment and purchase to get. Um, so, yeah, you'll go through fleet credits pretty freaking quick. Um, right. Uh, in the center there, you have bank mail and exchange access. Um, here, however, you have space equipment. Uh, you have critical hit tactical consoles. You have critical damage consoles. You have uh, warp cores, uh, elite warp cores, advanced uh, singularity cores, elite singularity cores, uh, hangar pets, and at atmospheric flight training. Um, this is for in the Dyson sphere. Uh, basically, it makes you move faster. Um, you have a ship selector here. You have a ship tailor here, and then you have ground equipment. Um, Basically, it's uh, kits and modules again, and you have all three careers. Um, there's a selection of kits and different modules available from this dude. And that's pretty much it for the Spire, but uh, the stuff that the Spire has is freaking cool. It is very, very cool. Uh, there's some really great stuff there. Okay, we are going to move on to the... Yeah, let's go to the Dilithium Mine. Okay, so we contact traffic control and we are going to beam to the surface. Okay, uh, we are going to start off here to the left. Um, first thing is uh, mail access there. And then we have Taylor. Uh, again, the Taylor hat. Oh crap, wrong one. Uh, exit out of that. Uh, store. Uh, there is another costume. It's a miner's outfit this time. Uh, as I said, all uh, fleet holdings have a costume with them. 
Uh, requisition space equipment. This is where you get engineering consoles and some pretty damn good engineering consoles. Um, if we look at this one, plus 21.3 all damage resistance rating and plus 10.6 hull capacity. Um, if we go down, there's ones with turn rate and here's ones with hull healing. Um, and yeah, there's all sorts of different ones. Uh, there's RCX uh, accelerators and holy crap, there's some really good stuff there. Um, we have exchange access here and continuing around. Uh, this is pretty pretty important actually. Um, there's two duty officer assignments. One called Mine Motherload of Valuable Minerals. Um, this is a good way of building up trade experience um, and if you get a critical success uh, you can end up with some really nice stuff. If you see there it says uh, six special items. Um, you can get fleet marks, you can get uh, dilithium mine provisions, there's a whole bunch of stuff. That, uh, or Well it's actually dilithium mine provisions but you can get fleet marks as well. Um, but yeah, a good mission to run once a day every day. And the other mission is Mine Dilithium Motherload. Again, very good for trade experience. You get 500 Dilithium from it as well. And if you get a crit, you get 750 Dilithium. Um, yeah, so they're good ones. So I'm actually going to run them. Then, finally, uh, the third mission, Additional Refining uh, Capacity. Basically, you can refine 500 Dilithium more uh, in 5 seconds. Um, so if we look at our current Dilithium War, we click Begin, 5 gone there, you'll see 5 in here. And it went up by 500. You can refine an extra 500 Dilithium here per day. Alright, so once per day you can come here and refine an extra 500 Dilithium War. Um, then you have the Duty Officer Requisitions, and if we go in again, uh, there's some really good duty officers here, but again, they're pretty freaking pricey. Um, there actually are very specific duty officers that you can purchase from this dude that are perfect for doing the missions here with this guy. Um, again, if you guys want to see that stuff, I will do a video on it later on, and uh, I will uh, let uh, yeah, I'll I'll do a video dedicated to that. Um, down here then, uh, let's put on our EV suit. Um, talk to this guy and there's actually some daily mining missions available. <clears throat> and what you can do is you can put on your EV suit and you can actually go outside here. And see, look, you're in space because you're on an asteroid, see? You're actually out on an asteroid. And you can go out here and you can actually uh, mine additional dilithium here per day, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, I'm going to put back on my armor. Right. Um, over here we have bank access. And finally, the last dude, requisition warp cores. Uh, again, these are more fleet uh, warp cores. You have advanced and elite versions, and the same with singularity cores. Some of these are pretty freaking sweet, to be honest with you. Um, you would have to to see if any of them are a right fit for your playstyle and build. Uh, to be perfectly honest, that is 100% up to you. Uh, contact traffic control. We are going to move on to. Uh, looks like we're going to have to go back to the starbase uh, to get to the other ones. Okay, so where are we going next? Uh, we went Embassy, Dilithium Mine, Spire, so we just have Research Lab and K13. We'll go to the Research Lab first.
Okay, so once again we contact traffic control and we beam to the interior. Right, um, you have ship repair here with this dude, uh, same as we've shown before. Any damage on your ship, you can get it repaired there for free. Um, over here we have the medical officer. If you have any injuries on yourself or your bridge officers, you can heal them there for 100% for free. We have bank access, we have mail access, and we have exchange access. Uh, over here on this console, and just to show you, this is the door we came in, so directly across. Uh, we have Trace and R&D Project Slot Store. Um, remember I said you can unlock additional trait slots uh, here, um, and also for R&D. This is where you can purchase them, but again, they're pricey. Look at the Starship trait slot, 250,000 fleet credits. Alright, 100,000 for each of the others, 150 for the ability one, and 100,000 uh, for the uh, project one, uh, the R&D project one. Um, so once again, I know I'm harping on about it, but you can go through a million fleet credits very, very easily. Um, right, we're going to go over here into development. Uh... There's actually a pretty decent duty officer assignment here. You can uh, do a mission and um, it rewards you with a research XP bonus pool that will get added up here, meaning that every time you turn in an R&D project, uh, you'll get 20% extra XP for that project. But it's also a good way of getting uh, science XP and engineering XP, uh, especially if you get a crit. Uh, you can also get research lab provisions from it as well. Uh, I, I'm going to do it just for since I'm here. Um, but yeah, uh, fairly useful if you're still leveling up your uh, R&D schools. Uh, here you have kit frames. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's a really wide variety of kit frames. And that's just engineering. Then you have science and tactical ones on top of that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of kit frames there. Uh, this do daily research and development missions. You can do additional missions um, to level up your different schools. It's it's a daily, it takes a minute. Um, it, it can convert uh, it can convert a low quality R&D materials into higher quality R&D materials basically. So if I pick this one uh, this is what I'll get out of it. I'll get 1200 ore, uh, get whatever amount of energy credits uh, radiogenic particles, some tetrion, rubidium, and Z particles, which is actually quite good. Uh, I'm going to see about a different one. I don't want to get rubidium. Argonite. Yeah, argonite. There, that, that works. Except. And we go up to R&D. And I'm looking for a very specific project. I'm not sure which one it is. It's not here. Nope. Maybe it's cannons. I'm not seeing it. Um, complete the temporal phase resequencer R&D project in your... Alright, shields. Okay, shields. That's what I'm looking for. Here it is. Uh, look, see, it's going to use all this stuff. The tronium, the magnesite, the hexafluorine gas, and the verteron particles. And uh, it takes 10 seconds, and you get 5,000 XP for it. Um, and it converts all that junk into this much better stuff. Uh, so not bad. Not bad at all. Um, and you can do that once a day. And there's my 6,000 because I got 20% extra. And click this and ta-da! I just got myself 1,200 ore and it goes on a 20 hour cooldown. Um, so yeah, useful. Can be quite useful. Anyway, we're going to leave here and we're going to go to the opposite side of the station. And we are going to go into, I think it's uh, research and development, uh, the area. No, it's just research. Okay, it's just research. Um, right. This dude here, bridge officer vendor. You can get bridge officers here. Krenim bridge officers. Um, they're pricey uh, in terms of fleet credits. Um, yeah, 
Uh, to be honest, I actually don't know much about them, but uh, I think the Romulan ones are far better. Uh, then you have a duty officer store, and you can purchase duty officers. Um, yeah, uh, you can get some very rare, you can get rare or commons. Or uncommon, sorry, not commons. Uh, this console is your secondary deflector store, and you have three different types of secondary deflectors. And again, you would have to go through each one to figure out which one is best for your build and play style, uh, assuming that your ship has a secondary deflector. Um, if it's a signed ship, then it has a secondary deflector. Um, kit modules. Uh, you have uh, a nice selection of kit modules here. Um, tank engineer and science. Uh, these are grayed out because I'm not an engineer or science officer, that's why, uh, just in case you're wondering. And again, you have the tailor, and once more, there is a store, and you can purchase a costume from them. Right, uh, contact traffic controller. We are going to go back to the fleet starbase, because that's everything on the research lab. And we will make our way to the last holding, um, K13. And I say last... At the time of this recording, it's the last holding. Uh, there, are, there are no more. Uh, depending on when you're watching this, there could be five or six other, you know, brand new holdings uh, in the game. Uh, but at this current time, you have uh, Starbase, K13, Research Lab, Spire, Embassy, Dilithium Mine, and the Colony World. Okay, so we talk to the transport operator once more, and we select K-13. And we're going to dock with the station. Right. Um, starting off here, you have uh, Officer of the Watch. Some of the holdings have these um, Officer of the Watch missions, and uh, basically you can pick up 20 fleet marks uh, by doing the Officer of the Watch mission. Uh, it usually takes about two or three minutes, uh, if that, to do the mission, and um, yeah, it's it's an alternative way to get some fleet marks. Whoop de do, it's it's not a big deal. Uh, this console, bank mail and exchange access. Uh, docking master is basically your ship selector. Um, yeah, if you uh, want to switch starships or anything like that. Uh, duty officer assignments. Um, extract Dracona system minerals. Um, not a bad way of getting... You get some decent XP from it, really, and you get a little bit of dilithium. It's even nicer. Well, it's not that much nicer if you get a crit on it, but sure, hey, let's, let's, let's do it. Uh, then you have your ship tailor. Um, ship, ship tuner there, yeah. Alright, we're going to go out this door, and we're going to take a left, and then we're going to take a right. Right, first up uh, is K-13 Personnel Officer. And uh, this is where you can purchase 23rd century bridge officers. Um, there's some special bridge officers. Uh, you have uh, some duty officers here as well, uh, uncommon, rares, and very rares. And uh, these very rares are, yeah, they're not badly priced. And then you have uh, some training manuals, uh, 23rd century training manuals, um, that you can train your bridge officers uh, in those uh, 23rd century abilities. You have uh, the tailor, once again, and there is a costume. Uh, with that, uh, there's actually two costumes um, with this tailor. And then you have uh, retrofit equipment requisitions, which is basically some ground weapons, uh, 23rd century themed ground weapons, and space weapons. Um, so, you know, if you like the TOS uh, weapons, they, they have that kind of a feel to them. And there's all the different variety uh, phaser, plasma, uh, polaron, tetrion and so on and so forth. Uh, right, okay. Uh, we'll come out here, we're going to take a right, and we're going to take a left, 
and we're going to go to the far side of the station and we take a left and a right and we're going to the last room and we'll talk to this dude who is the biologist this guy this is actually rather important um, so if we open up our traits uh, see our personal traits here uh, for ground and space this dude has superior versions of those traits okay uh, so let's let's take a look here uh, one that we're using there sturdy see here this one oh no that's resilient sorry that's my bad uh, I got mixed up in the uh, techie there we go techie and here's techie superior techie uh, there are superior versions of uh, not all of the traits but let's say a, a fairly decent amount uh, they are pricey but but they're a good investment um, so for example with techie see this plus 20 starship hull uh, restoration and plus 20 starship damage control it would increase the stats from 20 to 25 or 30 maybe I, I'm, I'm just taking a guess here um, uh, kind of going from memory um, but I'm not 100% certain um, so yeah uh, you will no doubt find a number of traits listed here that you are using and you can get a superior version of them um, at a hundred thousand apiece it's quite an investment but it could make a big difference to your bill believe it or not uh, Xenotech equipment this dude has uh, kit modules and he also has uh, some engineering consoles as well uh, ones for power flow um, resilience uh, damage res uh, resistance and so forth and that's it really for K13 um, if we take a right here and then take a left uh, you can see we're back into the uh, the main area and yeah that's it so that's a, a very thorough introduction to fleets what they are what you can do with them how they work and um, the vendors and the stuff that you can get from them um, so I guess uh, thanks a million for watching folks I hope you all enjoyed this episode uh, if you did please leave a like if you have any questions or comments on anything that was covered in this episode feel free to leave them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can and as always please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already my name is Winters and I'll see you next time so until then Take care.